2025 hidden or not commonly known Mercedes Features Mega Collection. Hello guys, warm welcome back to the Kilohertz Mercedes channel. So this video is going to be a combination of all five volumes of my five hidden or not commonly known Mercedes Features videos, which are my hugely successful videos that I started about six years or so ago. As a result, some of the footage on here is a little bit shaky and so on. My video and editing skills have improved dramatically over that time. So it's kind of like a remastered video if you like. I've re-recorded virtually all of the audio and replaced some of the video clips as well. Now these are hidden or not commonly known. So remember, you yourself may know these, but not everyone has the time to look through every single page of the brochure and so on. And this is for them. So let's get started with the video. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, let's get started. It's a really hot day and you lock your car and leave it with the sunroof still open. However, later on it starts to rain and the interior of your car is gonna get damaged. Don't worry, Mercedes has already thought about this. Should the rain sensor on the front windscreen detect any water, it will automatically close the sunroof as I'll now demonstrate with this bottle of water. Also, it's worth pointing out that the car will automatically close the sunroof itself after around 5 hours. Mercedes ditched the manual transmissions from all of their models until fairly recently. Even the humble A-Class, which I'm driving here, can no longer be specced with one. And for those wanting a more sporty drive, you can always use the paddle shifters or flappy paddles, which are located on the rear of the steering wheel. Now these change the car into a somewhat quasi-manual mode, however in this mode it will still automatically switch the car back into a normal auto mode as soon as it detects that you're trying to rev the engine too high. There is another option, an almost permanent manual mode which can be selected. Press the dynamic switch on the centre dashboard to engage the transmission select menu. You will now be presented with the standard array of shift options. Highlight but don't select the individual mode and you'll notice at the bottom left of the screen there is a gear icon. Select this. You can now change your personal custom settings for drive, steering and stability programs. Select the drive option. Within this new sub menu, scroll down to the very bottom and select the manual option. Now back out of all the screens until you're in the home screen. Now your car will be in the manual gearbox mode as indicated at the bottom right of the screen with an M icon. The car will now remain in M for manual mode until you manually change it yourself. It will no longer automatically change when you rev the engine high, it will remain in manual. It will even display an upshift indicator telling you when it thinks you should be shifting up to a higher gear or down to a lower gear. Now you will of course need to select this from the dynamic gearbox switch on the dashboard each time you switch the car on, but this is as close you're going to get to a manual gearbox in your modern Mercedes. Keyless entry. Such a convenient feature which we've all gotten used to. However, over the past few years it's become apparent of their huge weakness with this car security system. We've all seen those horrible CCTV images in the middle of the night of thieves using the equipment to clone car keys, allowing them to easily drive off and steal people's vehicles with relative ease. It appears Mercedes have taken note of this and have added another option to their security systems. On the latest Mercedes models, such as this 2018 C-Class, after locking the car with the touch centre on the door as normal, if you then double press the lock button on the key fob, it will disable completely the car's keyless entry system. The car will confirm this by flashing the indicators four times to confirm that this has been actioned. If you try and access the car, even with the actual key fob in your hand, 
it won't allow you to gain entry. The keyless entry system has been completely deactivated. Now to reverse this back to normal, simply press unlock again on the key fob. And just to demonstrate this one more time, and note the indicators flashing four times. Now here we have a great example of Mercedes over-engineering on older models, such as this W202 C-Class. With the headlights switched on, all switches are backlit so they're visible at night. Now there's nothing particularly special about this. However, once you switch on the child lock button on the centre console to disable the rear windows, the rear door switches will no longer be illuminated. Neat, eh? That's worth noting that this doesn't appear to be an option on newer models anymore, possibly a result of cost cutting. Now picture the scene, you're driving along with all the windows and sunroof open and you see in the distance a tunnel approaching. Now you don't have to have that windy noise buffering effect, Mercedes have thought of this. You can activate the tunnel mode which instantly closes all the windows and sunroof automatically. Alternatively you can do the opposite if you're in the middle of summer and when you return to your car and inside is an oven you can instantly open all the windows and sunroof to remove the roasting hot air. Now how is this actioned? With the car's ignition on, simply press and hold the air recirculation button for around 5 seconds. If you want to do the opposite and open all the windows and sunroof instantly when entering a hot car as previously mentioned, you will need to have previously preset the position of the windows so the car knows how far to open them, otherwise it will simply open them to the last known setting. Simply press and hold the button for 5 seconds once again. Now depending on the model of Mercedes you have, it'll either say rest on the button or it'll show a little picture of air moving around a car's cabin such as the button here. If your car's been fitted with the optional keyless go system, your model may have the engine stop start button located at the side of the steering wheel like shown. Obviously pressing this button in will start the engine and another press will stop it as required. What you may not know however is that this button can be removed revealing a hidden key slot. With two hands, carefully hold each side of the button and pull it towards you. This will reveal the entire button unit. This is so that you can still manually start the car should there be a fault with the keyless go system so that you're not left stranded. Simply insert the car key into the slot and turn so that you can start the car's engine manually. And of course, to switch off the engine, simply do the opposite and turn it the other way as you'd normally do. So to quickly go over what is happening here and see how it works, you can see here the stop start button on the left with the regular key on the right. As you can see, both have identical shaped ends. However, on the key, there's a small window allowing the infrared signal to be read by the car within the barrel. And now looking at the stop start button, pressing it reveals two little pins which must correspond to two holes at the bottom of the barrel which must in turn activate the car's ignition system. And to use keyless go again, simply insert the button back into the barrel and click it into place. the wiper blade service position. When washing your car, you'll want to access the entire window, including under the windscreen washer blades, or if you actually want to swap and replace the windscreen washer blades. By default, you're not able to do this, as attempting to lift the wiper blades away from the car's windscreen 
they'll fall foul of the top of the car's bonnet or hood and actually make contact. Mercedes have thought of this. Enter the car and make sure that it's switched off. Switch on the ignition, but not the engine. And for keyless go cars, such as this one, press the engine start button without your foot on the pedal to get the ignition on. Now press the wiper button once, and then again the second time holding it down. After a few seconds or so, the wipers will move up to the upright service position, allowing you to fully clean the window glass or easily swap and replace the window wiper without any damage to the car's bodywork. Just to note, this can be actioned with the door shut as well as with the door open. On most higher models of Mercedes, such as this W211 E-Class model, they should be fitted with extendable sun visors. Open up either side sun visor, unclip it and swing it around to the side window. Next, carefully pull it back towards the rear of the car to reveal that they can be extended to cover the entire side window. Now you may need to pull these extremely hard if it's never been used before and it's seized. Additionally, on the very top spec models, they'll also include a second, smaller sun visor to be used in conjunction with the main extendable sun visor when it's in position and the sun is still blinding you from the quarter position. Handy feature, don't you think? Next, this one is for the owners of older Mercedes models such as this W202 C-Class or W124 E-Class models. Should you ever need to spend a long time accessing the boot or trunk, you can manually switch off the interior light to save the car's battery power. To do this, simply pull down on the grey pinwards outwards. This prevents the light from draining the car's battery as it normally remains illuminated for around 20 minutes or so. To reverse this, simply close the boot lid once again and it will reset the pin. We've all been there at some point. You get out of your car and lock it only to notice that either yourself or one of your passengers have left one or all of the windows down or the sunroof open. All you need to do is point the key fob directly at the little black sensor on the driver's door and hold the lock button down. As long as you keep pointing it and you're within one meter of the car, all the windows will automatically close as well as the open sunroof. Additionally you can do the opposite and open everything back to the previous settings by pressing and holding the unlock button this time, again pointing at the sensor. Very useful on a hot day when you want to remove all the hot air quickly. As virtually all of the roads are full of traffic jams these days, especially here in the UK, we spend half the time driving with your foot held down firmly on the brake pedal. Did you know that you can get your Mercedes to hold the brake pedal down itself, allowing you to rest your tired right foot, even with the car left in drive? To activate this cool feature, with your foot already pressed down on the brake pedal, simply press it down firmly again, further, until we see hold displayed at the bottom of the instrument cluster. Now you can completely remove your foot away from the pedals and the car will keep the brake pressed down for you. All you need to do to get the car moving once again and switch this off is to simply press the accelerator pedal once again. Now here's a strange one, on the 211 E-Class and the 219 CLS models with the four zone digital climate controls, now that's the version with the screen for the back seat, there is a hidden debug or engineering menu. To access this, hold down the rest button as well as the off button for around five seconds or so until you see 00 on the left hand side of the screen. To toggle through all the options, use the temperature control buttons on the left hand side now don't press the buttons on the right hand side as these will adjust the values and if you don't know what you're doing you could change some of the settings and potentially break your heating system. 
Check the video description below to see what all the numbers relate to and what the values mean. To return the controls back to normal, simply press and hold the rest button and the off button again for 5 seconds. We all know that you can open the boot lid via the switch on the driver's door. Did you know however that if you have the electronic boot closure option fitted to your car with the button on the boot lid, you can also close it again from the driver's door as well. Instead of pulling the switch backwards towards you as normal, push and hold the button forwards towards the front of the car until it finishes closing. Now it's amazing how many people do not realise that this option is available to them in their car. It's also worth pointing out that cars from 2013 onwards, you can also do this via the car's key fob as well by holding down the boot lid button while it is open. Here's a really simple one, but a lot of people still don't know you can do this. You can use the boot lid floor grab handle to hook over the boot seal and hold the floor in place, allowing you to access the lower section of the boot hands free. Nice and simple eh? Did you know that you can set the remote central locking to only open the driver's door rather than all four doors? Handy if you live or travel through slightly dodgy areas. As you can see here, locking and unlocking the car activates both doors at the same time. Now to change this so that only the driver's door works, follow these steps. Unlock your car and hold down both the lock and unlock buttons on your key fob for around 5 seconds until you see a red LED flash. Once you've seen the red flash, now lock the car and unlock it one more time and you'll notice that this time only the driver's side will unlock. To reverse this process and return the car back to its factory settings or to switch modes at any time, simply repeat the process once again by holding down both the lock and unlock buttons on the key fob. Again until you see the red LED flash to confirm that the change has taken place. Did you know that you can raise your bonnet, or hood if you're American, to a completely upright position to ease access to the engine bay when working on your car? To do this, open the bonnet up as normal and head over to one of the side hinges and locate the inside tab. Pressing it, you'll notice that there's no movement. This tab is cantilevered to release the round pin on its other side. To release this pin, pull down the bonnet close around 10 centimeters or so, enough that you can see the round pin is free and no longer trapped in place. At this moment, hold down the inside tab and keep it held down whilst pushing upwards on the bonnet, enough until the round pin is no longer able to return back to its home position, like so. Next up, head over to the opposite side of the car and you'll be able to simply push the inner tab in and keep it held down. Then slowly keep pushing the bonnet upwards until the bonnet is completely vertical. Now this will feel counterintuitive at first, but don't worry you won't break anything. To close the bonnet, simply reverse the process by pushing in on the tab on one side while slowly pulling the bonnet down and then head over to the other side and repeat the process. Useful eh? If your car has the command NTG 5.5 version, such as the W205 C-Class model, there is a hidden audio dealer menu hidden within this menu. You can adjust and separate the volumes of the telephone, music playback and traffic announcements. Now to access this hidden screen, navigate the cursor down to the lower level of menu options, 
which include the system settings, time and display off options. Move the cursor across to the left hand side system settings menu. Now move and hold the controller to the left as shown for around 10 seconds and keep it held left until the hidden dealer menu appears on screen. You should now be presented with two pages of options, most of them will be greyed out however. The volume separation and comfort volumes options are still available. Starting with the volume separator menu, select this and then the navigational sub menu should appear. Click on this and another sub screen should appear, containing the volume slider. This allows you to manually adjust the navigational voice volume to your own preferences. Now onto the comfort volume menu. Click on this and you'll be presented with phone, navigational guidance, entertainment and finally TA or traffic announcement sub menus. Each of the following sub screens have an internal and external pair of volume sliders. Play around with these if you've been having audio issues and you are now happy with the results. At any time, just return the sliders back to zero to return back to the factory default settings. Once you've finished playing around with all these options and volume sliders, simply keep pressing back until you're on the dealer menu and then navigate to the second screen, that's two of two, and select the end option to return back to the standard command screen. Own a Mercedes which was built after 2011, then you may well have noticed that there's a QR code located within the fuel door. What's this for? Well, it's known as a rescue card, as written below the code. What exactly is it, however? Grab your phone and scan the code. Once scanned, it will take you to a unique address for the model of car which you own. Now, this page has been specifically designed for the emergency services. Should the worst happen, you're involved in a car accident and say there may be some occupants trapped within the car, this page gives the fire service a detailed schematic of all the hazardous areas within the car, such as a battery location and all the airbag locations. Or with more modern versions of cars, the hybrid system with the high voltage cabling and powertrain batteries. Should the emergency services also need to use their jaws of life cutting tools, this page is extremely useful for them to know where it's safe for them to cut to avoid any major cabling or any airbags etc. If your Mercedes was fitted with the optional Linguatronic voice control system, you'll most likely agree that it's far from the best system out there. How this works is by pressing the button down on the steering wheel, it activates your car's basic voice control system, such as navigating to a preset destination. Now it's slow and fairly clunky to operate. Please speak a command. Navigate home. However, if your car is one of the new Mercedes models with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto built in, you can also bypass the car's Linguatronic system and use Siri or Google Assistant's voice control instead. Please drive to highlighted route. To activate this, simply press and hold down the Linguatronic button for around 3 or 4 seconds or so. Navigate home. Getting directions to home. Home. As you can see here, it reacts almost instantly and offers a far better, up-to-date navigational map than Mercedes built-in offering. Starting route to two main streets. Head northeast on Evesham Road. It's also worth noting that any voice command you'd normally use via Siri or Google Assistant can also be used here via the same method. Here's a really simple one. With the current generation of Mercedes models, they have a roller dial on the center console controlling the volume. Very simple to operate. You simply roll it upwards to increase the volume and downwards, of course, to reduce the volume. 
Now what isn't immediately clear however, is that if you press down the roller button, it will actually mute the current audio selected. Pressing it down once again will return the volume back to its previously set level. Another useful feature, which is generally unknown by Mercedes owners who have the optional memory seat function, is the auto dimming passenger mirror feature. Once in reverse, the passenger side mirror will automatically dip down, providing you with better visibility of obstacles such as curbs. Importantly, this only works when the passenger side mirror has been selected within the window control panel. I'll demonstrate this now to show you this useful feature. Now once you change the car back into drive, the mirror will return back to its original preset position for you. Now remember, this only works if your car has been specced with the memory seat function option and you've enabled the mirror aid parking adjustment feature from within the car's dashboard cluster. On a CLS and E-Class models, this is within settings, convenience, then scroll across until you get to the relevant menu. Back in the day, you could check your oil simply by looking at the end of your engine's dipstick. Not now though. A spacer? Yeah, thanks a lot Mercedes. Fear not, you can now check your oil level electronically at any time. Insert the key and set the ignition to position 2. Then make sure that you're on the speed or the temperature screen. Next, press the dial button on the left hand side of the instrument cluster three times in succession until you hear a beep. You should now see a voltage indicator appear. Now press the up button on the steering wheel until you see this screen. Then switch on the engine, after a few seconds you should see the current oil level displayed. Don't be alarmed if the oil level rapidly drops while it takes its reading. Now it's worth noting that you can also use this screen to reset the service level indicator. Please refer to my other video with details on how to action this. For some unknown reason, modern Mercedes, for example those built after 2020, by default have an extremely late threshold for activating the audible alert with the parking sensors. Although you can see the coloured indicators displayed on the screen, you'll not hear anything until you're virtually hitting the obstacle in your way, greatly increasing the chance that you'll hit something unseen. Thankfully however, there is a setting to warn you early and increase the sensitivity, but it's not that obvious where you find this. Navigate to the home screen and then to the assistant top bar. Click on this menu and select the camera and parking option. Now at the top you should see the option warn early all around option. Click on this to select it. The blue bar will appear to the right to confirm it's been selected. Why on earth this isn't the default option for the car, we'll never know. Whilst in this menu there are various other options and settings you can adjust including the open camera cover option at the bottom should you ever need to clean the camera lens. With the warn early option selected, it will make an audible beep as soon as the radars detect any object, vastly reducing the likelihood that you'll hit something unseen like a curb for example. The difference is plain to see, with the option selected it will warn you in just under a metre from the object, whereas the standard default setting is as little as 30 centimetres from the object. So, ending the video on a fairly simple one, as per all the previous volumes in this series, on more modern Mercedes models, you'll have this little volume roller located on the top of the centre console. Pretty obviously, as you all know, scrolling it downwards decreases the volume and upwards increases it. 
Fairly simple and nothing special about this function. Did you know, however, if you actually press the button down, it actually mutes the current music which is playing. Now, of course, you have a mute button on your steering wheel to do the same, but it is a convenient feature to have while your hand is down, controlling the volume of the music anyway, as a nice little shortcut. Another added little bonus about this button, if you're on a radio screen, actually holding this button down rather than just pressing it, toggles the annoying, and dare I say it's pretty useless in our days, TA traffic announcement feature. Simply press it down for a few seconds to either enable or disable this feature, noted by the little TA icon at the top of the screen. We all know that Mercedes provides a little rubber cord attached to the fuel cap to prevent you from losing it when refueling. What some of you haven't noticed is that instead of letting the fuel cap hang down, potentially scratching the car's paint and bodywork, they also provide a little cage or indent allowing you to store it while refueling. With the cap handle facing you, push it at the cap in until it clips into place, making sure that the cord isn't in the way. On newer models, the cage is gone but has been replaced by a small plastic holder built into the fuel door hinge. Useful, eh? 